What's going on everybody? Jay Hayes here. So today I'm going to be doing a review on a device that I picked up for the purposes of the review. I feel like I'm going to get one of these boxes one day that either A, they're going to explode, B, they're going to have anthrax in them, or C, it's going to be a totally empty box. I think it's going to be one of those three. Probably the second option. They're going to send me anthrax. The good part is, is when I was in the military, they gave me anthrax shots. I don't think they really knew what they were injecting people with in the military, but I got the anthrax anthrax shots. I got them all. I got smallpox, so I should be covered for half the shit that will be sent to me, unless of course it's semi black syphilis, or the plague, or like 55 cockroaches. If they sent me 55 cockroaches, I'm gonna throw that fucking box so quick through that window, it's gonna be gone quicker out of the store than it was coming into the store. However, we know at this point that 75% of the shit I get is gonna be absolutely fucking junk. Not that the device is bad. Well, yeah, no, the device is bad because it doesn't work or it's gonna malfunction. I made a video yesterday. I was in the middle, I actually have this on video. I'll eventually edit it after I get it back from Charles, but I had a box mod, a steam engine that actually got thermal runaway on the left battery. I could have lost my damn chin or my teeth. I would have been looking like a 90 year old reviewer with no teeth and a cane and a half burnt up face. Looking like an old cigarette in a candy shop. Why are there cigarettes in the candy shop? You're probably asking yourself that question and so am I. So today we're gonna be going over the, I wanna say oblique, but that's not right. I wanna say obelisk, but that's probably not right either. This is pronounced obelisk. I don't like that. I'm just gonna go with oblique. I don't like that either because it's obelisk. Obelisk, obelisk. Apparently what this means is stone pillar. So hopefully when I open this up, I don't get a bunch of driveway rocks inside the box. So without further ado, let's flip it. Oh, before we flip it, check this. There's a lot of controversy around this device. There's people saying that this was bitten off of the Vapor Chronicles idea. I don't really want to get too much into that because I don't have his dripper, but what I will tell you is I was told that someone, whether it be Obelisk or Cartel Mods, or whether it be TVC, someone had posted their design on Instagram and another company was like, ooh, ooh, let's grab it. It's probably Vapor Chronicles had posted it and then Cartel had made it. If you look at these two devices side by side, you're going to see a lot of similarities. There's a couple differences as far as the screw is concerned, but I don't really have the device too much to go over, so I'm going to have to keep this device for if and when I get that device to compare it to. So without further ado, let's flip it. Obelisk. Obelisk. This is what that is. That looks like the Washington Monument. So we have the Washington Monument dripper. Stupid word for a tank. Make it simple. Cartel has been around for a long time time. Those of you that don't remember, they made the Still Air V3, the Still Air V2, the Still Air, the Still Air V4, the Revenant. The Revenant, I think, was their first project where they actually outsourced to China, but other than that, they were American-made. They made some mech mods. They made a lot or a large plethora of different devices. So this is in their lineup. Now, the reason why I picked this up is not because it's like another dripper. It's because someone had posted it on Wix and Coils, and I said, ooh-wee, I have to get that because that looks sick, like chicken pox sick. Flip this up. We are presented with a triple tool, triple tree I like to call these. Those of you that ride motorcycles, you know what a triple tree is. And in this trinket bag, we have a lot of different O-rings, a squonk pin, always a good thing. So this is no longer an RDA. We're gonna go ahead and classify that as an RSA. A 510 adapter, so 810 to 510 here. Nothing really else in here, just little soft styrofoams. A multiple airflow option here multiple airflow option here and the same thing on the other side very generic standard 810 style luscious and delicious the top cap on the top is going to come off now once this comes off this is how you are going to adjust your airflow on the top 
you only have a dual coil option on the top. What I'm not enjoying by looking at this is this is clearly painted black. I don't think that's anodized. It actually looks like a powder coat. And then on the inside here, I don't know if this is powder coated as well because unless that is of course aluminum, it looks like the color of what aluminum would be. Top airflow is very, very simple and I'm assuming these little cuts or facets have a certain type of intake of air which is why they're shaped like that. Now it may be possible that they're trying to keep the Washington Monument style obelisk, obelisk, obelisk. The bottom airflow though strangely enough is extremely extremely thin. Let me zoom in and show you what I'm talking about. Look at that little do you see this? If that's not good machining I don't know what is because those little strips right there I feel that if you press oh yeah Oh yeah, if you press that, that's going to snap. So I guess if you don't like how small those little slits are, you can make it even that much bigger by popping those off. I would get like a Dremel or maybe a nice pair of snips, little wire snips to cut that and then open it up all the way. The thing is with the sleeve is it only goes on one way. And if you look on the inside here, I don't know how well you're gonna see it. There's a little bit of a step. And what that is, is the bottom diameter of this is gonna be one millimeter bigger than that of the top. So that doesn't allow you to use the top as the bottom and the bottom as the top. When you turn the bottom or you turn the sleeve to adjust the airflow on the bottom, what's gonna happen is your airflow that is directed towards your coils already is gonna change. Your best option is really gonna leave that wide open and just adjust the top airflow. Kinda sucks, but I guess it is what it is. I hate drippers that have two different airflows on the chimney and then it's so hard to work with. Four massive ports. This is not postless as they are little mini posts. You'll see on the side here we have these little cutouts, these little angular cutouts which are in fact some type of metal. What's unique about this airflow comes in right here on the sides and then kind of goes up at an angle. You see that? This block here is positive and this is negative because this is insulated all by itself. Peak insulated there on the bottom and when you make this a squonk it's obviously going to take that um, flat screw and make that with a port in it. Nothing really too special. That is almost borderline touching the sidewall of that sleeve. This is a little bit different than a dead rabbit, although the legs will go down in this little vicinity here and then you can, I don't even know how you would get snips in there to cut that. So you're really gonna wanna pre-cut your jimmies before you put them in their jammies. Depth of the well is closer to the three millimeter mark. 2.61, that is super shallow. What I wanna show you is, this is all I can really pull up right now for you to kind of gauge. This is the drop. They do have some similarities as far as it being for post. I mean, I don't, again, this may not be the final rendition and I apologize, I don't have this in front of me right now, but I guess they have some similarities, but I don't think that this is a clone of that. Sure, it's close enough. It looks like you can actually get your snips in there to cut that. Really big ports. For the purposes of this review, I will not be utilizing this one. When you're building this, you really wanna make sure that your cotton has long enough legs to touch the base to make sure you get capillary action back up to the coil. It's quite a distance. So you'll see these coils are literally almost right over. When the cap goes on, it is so close to that top airflow. It is right next to it. And the reason why I did that is because I wanna make sure that I'm getting the proper airflow the way that this is designed. This is one of those drippers where it would actually be more beneficial to actually drip down the center and let it capillary action up. And that's where it goes into, you actually need, where you're gonna need your cotton to touch the base, otherwise it's never gonna wick. And then you have to make sure that you have room. Can't really go any closer, because now when you put this cap on, that's quite thick, kind of out of space. Good to go. All right guys, so we are back on top with the obelisk. Sitting on top of the Oceanus single 2700 box mod. Love the look of that. Solid black, matte black. Just looks really, really good. Uh-oh, SpaghettiO. Yeah, this mod is, I tried telling you in the review this mod was something serious. I absolutely love it. We are working with 4.9 volts at 63.1 watts, little spurties, little jizzy jams. Let me show you some of the vapor production I'm working with. Oh shit. Two hits, 63 watts, 
already hot. Problem I'm having is because the coils are entirely too close to that airflow, it's gonna give me the most amount of flavor, but it's gonna come out of cost. It's gonna make that top very, very hot. The heat is going to dissipate really, really quick. It's just, it gets hot. Just keep that in mind. You don't have to build it as close as I did. I just really wanted to utilize that bottom airflow and the side airflow on the same coil. Wow. And that, okay, uh, you saw the build. The fuse clapton's. This is producing a lot of heat. A lot. Don't know if I'm really a huge fan of that. So let's get into the actual dripper. First off, the spit back on this thing is immense. If you don't wick this right and there's too much spacing between your coils and it's really wet, you're gonna get a lot of spit back on this, a lot. And the coils are so close to your mouth, you're gonna get a lot of flavor, but again, it's gonna come at that cost of how hot this is going to get. Even if I'm using something like 47.5 watts, when I hit this two, three times, it gets really, really warm. I know a lot of that is due to the way that the coils are. I like the way that the deck is, I really do. I like the options of the airflow. I just feel like they could have been executed and applied to a different part of the dripper versus just the sides. If you took out the bottom airflow and just kept the side airflow, that would be more than enough. You don't really need the bottom airflow. I guess the feature is there and that's just something that they want to go with. It's good there. Get a little warmer. Now it's hot. One more is going to make it. <coughs> Shit. Now it's hot. And I'm not using a lot of power. This is in fact stainless steel and it is Cerakoted. That's why it feels like it's aluminum, but in fact it is not. If I was to rate this device on a zero to 10, I'm gonna give it like a 5.56. I feel like there could have been better execution of the actual airflow, but I get it. It's different in a sense, the two different ports. If it is in fact truly a clone of the drop RDA, then you know what, listen, that sucks, man. It really does but everybody is making clones of everything or copying one from another dripper to another dripper and it's all the same shit. I wish I had the drop here to compare them side by side. All I had was the picture that I had shown you guys. It's a decent device where it is. It's not a dripper that's so important for you to go out and get that it's so innovative. And I will tell you that the price tag of this thing, it's not worth it. It's entirely too much for what this is. If in fact it is made in America, then okay, I guess so. Uh, the machining doesn't look like it's made in America and the price tag makes it appear that it's made in America. The problem is, is that drippers now have become 20 to 40 dollar range so when you're seeing something 60 or 100 bucks you automatically get deterred away from it thinking that it's a ripoff i don't think this is a ripoff it's priced a little too high i believe 45 bucks is kind of where this should be and i've kept it real have you jay hazen